Hi, this is Ann with a quick anagram on um, the week two breakup exercise. Uh, I am not going to show you how to do the breakup. Uh, I think that's explained pretty well in the book. So this video picks up at the point where you have an index.html that has uh, the script link pointing at a file called code.js and you already have the code in a file called code.js. So I've already done the breakup business. I've also uh, changed my attribution section to something that's meaningful. Um, make sure yours is actually truthful, mine is not. So uh, just one quick editing thing before I actually demo how to show the code running in two ways and uh, what I want to see screenshots of. When you first cut your code out of the index.html, it was indented, uh, probably about eight spaces, and I would like you to start paying attention right away to the fact that your code should be neat, tidy, and start on the left margin. So if I highlight that whole set of code and I simply do shift tab, I can get all of it to go back to the left-hand margin, which uh, this time doesn't make a huge difference, but uh, eventually will make a big difference in terms of being readability. We want our code neat and tidy. Uh, the other thing that you should know about probably sooner rather than later is if your code is not all indented properly, um, we want everything inside these curly brackets to be indented one stop then one of the features you have in your editor is a code formatting option where you can apply the code formatting and it will enforce indentation and some other um, formatting rules. But that's not what we're after here today. Generally in this class, most of the time when we are running our code that we've written, it's going to need the context of a web page in order to work. And that's what you've seen so far this week. If I um, click the HTML file and run it, and I bring a, and I open this tab, I have my HTML file, my web page, I can see my attribution, but I'm not actually seeing the code work. And um, in order to do that, and in order to take the screenshot that you need to take of the code working inside the console window, you have to be able to open up the console window. I'm going to show you how I do that on my, pay, on my browser and machine. You may well have to Google your combination of operating system and browser type uh, in order to find the same thing. So I actually have the ability to right click and inspect and bring up what are called the developer's tools. Now, those developer tools may come up in a different location for you. It's one of the options you have um, with this menu is you can have your developer tools show up on the bottom of your screen, or you can have them show up uh, on the right hand left side or as a separate window. Uh, generally speaking, for console logging, simple console logging, I kind of like them on the right. Uh, your mileage will definitely Vary. And when you bring up all of your developer tools, your console statements are not necessarily up to start with. So in my case here, uh, with my window on the right, I've got a little menu here that can get bigger. Um, but what I want to look at is not elements, but console. And here, I actually see the output from my code. So this code.js counts down from 99 to zero and sings the little bottles of beer on the wall um, song that none of us has ever finished until we could code it up. And one of the screenshots I want you to take is of the page looking basically like this, where you've got your URL for your HTML file up here, you're seeing the output of the web page here, and then you've got your console window up. Um, go ahead and put it on the right that would be a lot easier. And you won't be able to see all of the countdown. So however much fits in your screen, make sure that I'm seeing the, 
these last, at least these last three or four lines so that I can see that the code ran all the way through and take one screenshot that way. Now, again, much of the code that we write will be requiring web page elements to work. This code is actually kind of interesting. It is, um, it is an example of code that doesn't have any web page elements addressed in it. So this kind of code um, I usually refer to as, as being able to run as naked JavaScript. And so it's one of the few times when you can actually hit the run button when you are in the code.js file and, actually, and not see an error. So I'm going to hit the run button. And you'll see the output down here, a new little tab opens up. I can make that tab bigger if I want and see more of this output. Okay. So one of the screenshots I want from you is to, um, is of basically the bottom of this file. So I would like to see a screenshot that shows your workspace, your code, and your output. And just to demo what's going to happen real quickly, if uh, you try to run a JavaScript file that has, uh, has code in it that needs a web page to work, let me just add an alert statement to the top of this. Um, so I've added an alert statement to the top of this. Um, I'm going to save the file. Okay, so you, this little dot here, when you've changed code and, and this X is round, you really need to pay attention to that. If you don't save a file, you won't see the changes in your web page. But I have saved this one, and if I go over to, to my web page now and I run it, I get this alert message first, and I don't start seeing the console output until I click OK, and then I see the console output. So an alert works great when you're running the code from the web page. However, if I come over here and I try to do the same thing that worked before, which is I have the JavaScript file up and I hit the run button, takes a minute, and basically it barfs all over the keyboard. So uh, in this environment, alert is not defined. You need a window to be running inside for this line to be working. So if I take that back out and I hit run, which will save this file. See that little dot right there? That dot's important. You're going to end up trying to run code without having saved it and, um, and finding that code changes you have made are not showing up. So I'm going to go ahead and control S, which is a keyboard shortcut for saving the file. Get that little dot to turn into an X. I'm going to hit the run key. And my song is going to sing again. So I want one screenshot of your code working like this. One screenshot of your code working like this. And that's how you get credit for your work.